back to Free From Lifestyle. I'm bringing you today a week of family meals that are gonna be perfect for Monday to Friday, very easy to prepare, tasty of course, and will suit all of the family, even with some fussy children. As always, I'm gonna give you some gluten and dairy free options in case you need those, but these are all very versatile recipes which are gonna be delicious for the family to enjoy. My first recipe of the week is my fish finger pie. Now this is a very easy put together dinner. It doesn't take much cooking whatsoever, but it's a real hit in my house and I think that children in particular are gonna absolutely love this. And I have to say, my husband liked this one too. So nice and easy, and it's also very cheap as well. So that's great in this economic climate that we're in at the moment, the cheaper the better. So we've just got some white potatoes here, some baked beans, and some gluten-free fish fingers. Of course, if you're not gluten-free, you can just use regular ones. To begin with, I'm gonna get my oven tray here, and then my fish fingers, and I'm gonna cook these according to the packet instructions. This will be the base of the pie. This is probably the worst job now. We have got to peel these potatoes. That is my potatoes all peeled and chopped and in the water, ready to be boiled. We want them to be lovely and soft and then we can make these into a gorgeous mashed potato. Potatoes are perfectly cooked. I'm gonna steam up a bit, I think here. So into here, we are gonna add some of our butter. Into this, it'd be really nice if you could add some fresh chives, that would be lovely. But I'm keeping this fairly plain. I just wanna show you how delicious this can still be and it works for the whole family. Another way you could make this if you do not like baked beans or your children don't like baked beans, is I thought you could cook some peas, put the peas through the mashed potato and just layer that on top of the fish fingers with loads of cheese or mozzarella on top, that would be a delicious alternative as well. Fish fingers straight from the oven, lovely and warm. And now to pop on our baked beans. And now for the mashed potato. So I'm just going to spoon it over like so. You can fork the top just to give it a little bit of texture. And the last thing to add is your cheese. This needs to be baked in the oven for about 15 minutes. And here it is, out of the oven, my fish finger pie, lovely and crispy on the top with that gorgeous oozy cheese. Can't wait to serve up a portion. Oh, you can see those layers. Let's pop that in my dish. And that is my dinner. My second meal of the week is my vegan sausage casserole. Of course, if you don't want to use vegan sausages, you can use regular pork sausages or you could use chicken sausages. So again, it can be kind of changed to your lifestyle and how it works for you. But we like to have a meat-free day in the week. So this recipe is absolutely perfect for that. I like to keep my recipes as simple as possible for you. And this is a really good thing to use. I don't know if you've ever used this. I've got this in Tesco. So these are just frozen butternut squash chunks. I don't know about you, but chopping a butternut squash up is just not fun, is it? It's so hard. These aren't that expensive. I think this is a good purchase. I've also got frozen spinach because if I buy a massive bag, it goes off. We don't use it in time. So again, highly recommend doing that. Slightly random ingredient in this is some mango chutney, but I think a lot of us who eat Indian food would probably have that in the fridge. A tin of cannellini beans, some chopped tomatoes. As you see, I pick these up when they are a little bit damaged, saves on cost a little bit. And then store cupboard parsley, cumin, and coriander. I have got a stock cube, which is a vegetable one, a couple of garlic cloves, you can use lazy garlic if you prefer. And here are my vegan sausages, which I actually also bought reduced. So bargain dinner coming up. I need to keep turning them so that we get them colored on all sides. I've got my onion in my pan. 
that is coloring away nicely we've got that on a medium heat so next thing is my garlic so let's crush that in and scrape it off lots of garlic give this loads of flavor next we're going to pop in our spices so i've got some ground cumin and we just need half a teaspoon of that same of ground coriander and pop that in too literally just going to give that a minute in the pan let that combine with the onion it makes a lovely base a little bit you know like you're making a curry really it's the same sort of process isn't it our next ingredient is my tomatoes just give that a little mix round in with the beans i've drained those and i've also given them a little wash and then some vegetable stock oh look what's happened the stock's not completely dissolved, but that doesn't matter. Just pop, pop it in and it'll dissolve as it's cooking. And now the random one, the mango chutney. This makes all the difference. And we want a good, generous tablespoon of this. There you go. There's my tablespoon. And this is really sticky and really sweet. Now I just want to turn the heat up and then we can bring this to a boil. And then we can then turn that down and reduce the heat and just simmer it for about five minutes, I'll say. That's come to the boil now, so we're just gonna turn that heat down. Smells really, really good. Our brown sausages from earlier are now going to go back in here. I've just splashed that everywhere. I am such a messy cook, it's unbelievable. I try to not show you though. I try to make it look clean when I'm doing it. Doesn't always work out. And then if you're, using frozen spinach like me, then I'm gonna put those in now. So I'm just gonna dot those around. If you're not using frozen spinach, then you wanna add that right at the end just so that it wilts. And then this beautiful butternut squash. Again, I'm just going to dot that around so that we can get that defrosted. And we need to make sure that these sausages are fully cooked all the way through. All that's left to do is pop a lid on here now uh, i'm gonna give that around 15 minutes i think should be about right but i'll check it to make sure it's cooked and then at the end i was going to use some fresh parsley but i realized i didn't have any so i've just got a little bit of dried and we could just sprinkle that on at the end you could serve this just as it is or you could add some lovely creamy mash with this would be lovely as well or whatever takes your fancy maybe a jacket potato would be good as well here goes let's take the lid off and have a look that looks absolutely delicious i'm going to now serve up a portion of this for my dinner oh this looks lovely i was going to serve this tonight with um some jacket potatoes or some mash but actually i'm not feeling overly starving so i thought this is perfect just by itself I can pop a little bit of our parsley on top like so and that is one delicious dinner right there once a week i like to have some sort of fish so this is why i made this recipe and it is super tasty and it is my thai fish cakes again these are really easy and cheap to make and of course you don't have to put the thai flavors in so if you've got children that won't really appreciate that flavor then just leave that out and just make some gorgeous fish cakes to begin, I just thought I'd show you the ingredients we're using. So I've just got some white regular potatoes here that we're gonna peel and boil so that they're soft. So we're gonna make some mash to go in the fish cakes. And over here, I have got some breadcrumbs. Now I'm gluten-free, so for me, I need to use gluten-free bread. You can buy breadcrumbs, but I went to Tesco's today and they didn't have any, annoyingly. But if you're not gluten-free, use regular white bread. And what all I've done with this is that I have toasted this in the air fryer. You could do the same in your oven or in a pan, however you want to do that. But they do need to be sort of crispy breadcrumbs, dried breadcrumbs. And then we have got very simple ingredient, red Thai curry paste. I bought an, a supermarket brand, so an Asda one, because it was cheaper some chili powder which I had in my store cupboard 
a lime, a little bit of olive oil for cooking the fish cakes. To serve these, I'm going to use some sweet chilli sauce in some mayonnaise to make a little nice spicy mayo to go on the side, which I think will be lovely. We're also going to have some rocket on the side of this as well. And here is my tin of tuna that I've emptied. I nearly forgot a couple of spring onions are needed as well. So let's begin with the potatoes. We just need to peel those. Now I'm just going to chop up the spring onions into quite fine little pieces like this. You could also add into here some coriander because that would work really well. But it's just not my favourite herb, so I'm leaving it out. But I do know that a lot of people would like coriander with that sort of Thai flavouring. So you could use some fresh chilli if you want to. I'm just going to use some chilli powder and go in with that amount there. And we want sort of one to two tablespoons of this. So let's get my measure out. Oh, good, it fits in. So should we go with two? Why not? Let's go with two. Let's give some real good Thai flavour to these. Got a lime here and we're just going to get some of the zest off give this a lovely fresh zing which will work so well with the tuna and the thai flavors perfect that is the lime juice going in let's give that a little mix shall we and then we can add our breadcrumbs as well these aren't particularly fine i could put these in a food processor but if i'm honest i can't be bothered with the washing up tonight so I'm just gonna break them up a little bit more with my hands. And now we just need to wait for the potato to finish cooking and then we can add the potato into here. Potatoes are drained and I've added just some salt and pepper to them. And all we're gonna do is just give them a little mash. So let's pop the mash into here. I really hope you give these a go at home and please do leave me a comment. Fish cakes are now cooked. I'm serving two each. And on the side, I'm gonna serve this lovely sweet chili mayonnaise. If you don't wanna use mayonnaise, then you could use um, some Greek yogurt or something like that in with the sweet chili. That would also be really nice. So there it is. So I've got a rocket salad with my tuna Thai spiced fish cakes and that gorgeous sweet chili mayo. Next up is my bacon and leek gnocchi. We absolutely adore gnocchi. And I think it makes a change from having pasta as well or potatoes. It's somewhere in the middle, isn't it? And um, really easy to cook, of course. It only takes literally a couple of minutes. So this is a real quick, just quick dinner that you can put on the pan, on the hob. No, no real mess, very simple. I think you're gonna love this one. Here are the ingredients that you're gonna need for this dish. So I've got gnocchi here. I've got frozen peas, some parmesan, some bacon, which I've already chopped up. This is two small leeks or use one large one. And I've got some garlic cloves there and also a lemon. Please excuse the air fryer in the background. It's quite noisy, but um, we're having to multitask this evening. You want to put your bacon into a really hot pan. and We want to get this lovely and crispy and render down all of that fat. Now we pop in the leek. They're sliced quite finely and they are going to soak up that bacon fat and be absolutely delicious. Tiny little bit of salt, not too much because the bacon is salty. And into there we will also add our garlic. The bacon is crispy, the leeks have softened. In with my gnocchi and my peas. Give this a good toss around in the pan and that will soak up all of those flavors that are already in here. Look how quick and easy this is in family dinner. I'm actually cooking this for two people tonight, but I will leave down below the quantities for four. I've literally just Boil the, the gnocchi and the peas for two minutes and that is cooked to perfection now. All this needs is a lovely squeeze of lemon juice just to freshen that up. And then we're gonna be very generous with the Parmesan. Let's pop a 
portion on my plate. Look at that. It's very spring-like, isn't it, with the, the green vegetables. But the gnocchi has now got a little bit of texture and colour on the outside from putting it in the pan with that crisp bacon. And to finish the week, we have a chicken dish, which is my creamy chicken pasta. You can't beat it. I always think that it's a family favourite and this one is particularly yummy. So here goes, nice, quick and easy. Start with some chicken breast. I like to just trim mine up and I'm sure a lot of you do as well. Okay, pop the chicken to the one side. I've got my two breasts prepared here. I'm gonna just chop them into chunks like this. Um, quite even chunks, really. Now, onto this chicken breast, we need to season it up. Make sure it has loads of flavour because this is really the base of the sauce our pasta is going to go into. So, the more flavour you can give the chicken, the better. Really, you can add what you like at this stage. Um, but I like to have some salt, some black pepper. And I'm going to go with some smoked paprika as well. That's just Gorgeous, who doesn't love that? Be quite generous with that. That's good. Gonna have some oregano, lovely job, and some garlic granules. So very easy, quick start. I'm not measuring anything out. This is just a very simple recipe. I've added tomato puree in here, which was 15 grams. So yeah, just your standard tomato puree like that. And into that, I'm gonna pop a chicken stock. Add that in, and we need 350 mils, and I'm using boiling water. I've just boiled a kettle, and that's going straight in. Give that a mix. And that is all of our prep done. I've got my pasta here. I've just chosen penne, use whatever you like. I'm using gluten-free, and all the family are gonna have the same, because if I'm honest, the boys don't notice and I need it to be quick, so they'll never know. And so here's my pan, getting that on, and here is my frying pan, ready for my chicken. Let's add a little bit of oil. I'm coming towards the end of this spray oil. See if we can get some out still. Perfect. And let's get that chicken sizzling away. It smells amazing, by the way. This is going to be a really satisfying, comforting type dinner. I do realise, by the way, that there's no veg here. If you want to add veg and you want to add some, like broccoli maybe to this, you know, you could put it in the pan with the pasta. That would work really well. We're going to pop the pasta in and I'm going to cook that so it's al dente. So don't cook it fully. So a couple of minutes less than the packet tells you. At this stage, your chicken should be cooked and we add in that tomato puree with the stock to the chicken. This is gonna work as the base of your sauce. Into that, you want to put your drained pasta, which is al dente, not fully cooked. And now, whack a lid on, and we're gonna leave that for 10 minutes simmering. That has now had 10 minutes, so let's remove the lid. And as you can see, the liquid has reduced in there. Pasta is now cooked. Chicken is beautifully tender. So now in with our cream cheese. It's a very generous amount. You can use a dairy-free, lactose-free, lighter version, whatever you want to put in. And just give that a little swirl around in the pan. And this is gonna create such a beautiful sauce. It's gonna coat all of that pasta and make this super creamy. Now that that's combined, just pop in whatever cheese you want to. I'm going with a low fat cheddar in this. You could use Parmesan and let that just ooze and melt into that pasta. The creamiest chicken pasta in no time at all with more or less zero effort. I'm now gonna go and tuck into this I am starving. I really hope I've given you some inspiration of what you can make for a family.
These recipes are all so, so simple and delicious. And these are the sort of things that I don't just make once, I make very regularly. So these are tried and tested and enjoyed. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. And if you did, I'd love it if you hit that like button below and subscribe to my channel for more videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.